Hello friends, this video on reproduction in plants part 5 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now, to some extent similar to fragmentation is another process called regeneration. So regeneration means something which is regenerated, something which is like reformed again. So let's see. The parent if cut or broken into multiple pieces, each gives rise to a new individual. So now when you read this statement, it seems to be similar to that of fragmentation. However, it is not exactly the same as fragmentation. So regeneration is an accidental process. Now what do you mean by accidental process? Okay, now when we were talking about fragmentation, it is like the organism when it becomes mature, when it plans to reproduce, it breaks on its own. But in case of regeneration, the organism doesn't break on its own. If by chance, by any accident or if somebody had cut the organism, so if that way the organism get broken into pieces, then each of those pieces are capable of giving rise to the entire organism. Now we can say that this process of regeneration is not exactly the same as other modes of reproduction because it is quite unbelievable or it is not very convincing that an organism has to wait in order to reproduce. You know, it has to wait to be cut in order to reproduce because the organism cannot cut itself on its own. So this type of regeneration happens only by some specialized cells which are present in the body of that organism that have the capacity to develop into to different body parts. So let us take an example. So hydra, flatworm, tapeworm, they are all capable of regeneration because some their body contains some specialized cells which can develop into other body parts as well. So that process is called development. So let's look at this example. So here we have taken the example of planaria. So this organism, you see, if somebody has cut it into three parts, so each of these parts, so this, this and this, they are capable of giving rise to the other part. So if this part has only the head, but the head has specialized cells which can give rise to the bottom part of the body. So middle part of the body had cells which can give rise to the top and the bottom part of the body so, and so on. So that's how you see new organisms are being formed. So regeneration is basically, uh, you can say it is a property which is exhibited by specific cells and whichever organism has those specialized cells, they can only undergo regeneration generation that is if by accidentally they are cut into pieces each of those pieces can give rise to new organism so as such we cannot uh, consider it as same as other modes of reproduction because there the organisms reproduce on their own will but here the organisms reproduce accidentally so that is one very big difference of regeneration with other modes of the reproduction the next mode is spore formation. So let us see what is spore formation. So it is the formation of new individual by germination of spores. So let's see what are these spores and how these spores can give rise to new organisms. So spores are actually unicellular bodies in the parent that are capable of growing into a new individual. So again, as I said, unicellular would mean anything which is made up of a single cell. So these are nothing but special cells in the body of parents and these cells are have the capacity that they can form the entire new organisms. So I'll give you some examples. So let us take the example of this organism rhizopus. So rhizopus is a type of fungi. So if you uh, see something getting, you know, uh, spoiled, for example, a rotten tomato, as you can see in the picture. So here you can see, these are the fungi, which you can see here. So how do they look? They look like thread-like structures and on top of these thread-like structures, you see tiny blobs. So these tiny blobs, they contain pores. So these blobs, they contain spores, that is the special cells which can form new organisms. Now these spores, they are generally covered with thick walls during unfavorable conditions. But when they come in contact with moist surface, the spores are released and the spores begin to grow. So this is how it is. So you see the blobs, as I, as I was telling you here, these blobs, they contain spores. When these spores 
come in contact with suitable conditions like moist surface they start growing it is most commonly seen in algae bacteria and fungi the spores are very tiny so they are, are very tiny and they are very easily carried away by wind or water or by other animals sometimes you know like uh, it gets carried away with the it sticks to the feet of other animal and then it gets carried away from one place to another since it is very lightweight so it is easily carried away by wind or water water also so that's how spore formation takes place thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience please do not forget to like and subscribe to our youtube channel for latest updates thank you once again